Water, water. Earth, earth. Fire, fire, fire. Air. I'm really dizzy. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and welcome if you're new. Today, we are diving on into the brand new Avatar The Last Airbender. I actually watched the trailer for this show live on my other channel, Natty Gold, where I do live streams. I watched the trailer for this show long before it came out with some of you guys. And I know there were a lot of people who were really excited about this show. I personally wasn't. I was a really big fan of the animated show, the original show. I think it was fantastically well made, really pulled at the heartstrings, was just so beautiful, had such a great ending. And I didn't really feel like we needed a live action remake personally, but I had a lot of people really wanting me to check it out, wanting me to watch this, wanting me to watch the trailer, especially after the One Piece live action show was really well received. I think a lot of people have high hopes for this show and want it to be really good. Personally, what I saw in the trailer did not leave me feeling very optimistic. It didn't really look super high quality to me. It didn't really look innovative or that different or that new. It didn't feel like a story that really needed to be told, in my opinion. A lot of times, if something is going to be remade or adapted, I feel like there has to be a big reason for that to occur. Like there's been so much time maybe between the old version and the new that it's catering itself to a completely different generation and a completely new audience, or they're just doing something super revolutionary with the story and making it totally unique so that it's not really just a remake of what came previously. An example would be like the new Wonka movie that felt very different to me. And initially when I was getting into it, I was skeptical because I'm so attached to the Gene Wilder version, but it had been a while since we'd had a Wonka story and actually it was completely different. It wasn't the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory kind of story that we've gotten a couple times before. So there are examples of times when I'm on board for things that latch on to familiar IPs or familiar franchises. But I will admit when I saw this trailer, I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I need this. I don't know if I want this. But my community was super vocal and people online were super vocal. It seemed like a lot of people really wanted this show to do well. And a lot of people really requested that I check it out. So with all that being said, I think it's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into the show. Okay, not starting off this series with Sokka and Katara. He's an earthbender, okay. I was waiting for him to reveal. He's good. An earthbender. Yeah, thank you, sir. Oh, he's sacrificing himself. Get that to the Earth King. They're going to start a war. Go oh, now! Oh, oh, actually, this is a cool way to start the show. I'm down with this. The bending is already a lot better in this than it was in that M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> One would hope, you know? Oh, now they're gonna torture him. Hey, you're too late. <gasps> Lance are already on their way to the Earth Kingdom. Good. You, you wanted us to know. Mm, yeah, he's a little smart. We aren't the real target. Oh God, who's the real target? The Air, the air Nation's the real target. My sights are set higher. Yeah, the Air Nation. Because it is our time. Oh, damn. Crazy. I mean, we already knew that, but he just cooked him like that, just by touching him. It's like the opposite of the Midas touch. All right, now we're here. Oh, it's the intro, I see. Since the death of the last Avatar, Roku. the new incarnation has yet to emerge. And so, Fire Lord Sozin believes this is his moment to launch a merciless campaign. I almost wish they weren't giving us, I know they have to give us the exposition because that's the way like the original story goes and this is pro this might be a limited uh. series and they have to fit a lot into a short span of time. But I almost wish there was more mystery and they weren't like saying everything they were doing because like real fans of the show know. I almost wish it was a little bit more like the dialogue didn't reveal so much, you know, but we'll see. Oh, we're still, we're still in the, the olden times, huh? So this is cool because we didn't get this perspective in the very beginning of Avatar The Last Airbender. We got it later in the first season, not like the first episode, you know? I kind of like starting this way. It's different. 
Look at how happy they all are before they get exterminated by the Fire Nation. Oh, good times. Show off. I know, I was thinking the same thing, a little show off. I was just enjoying the bit. <laughs> this kid is really cute. This much you have to learn. And believe it or not, there may come a day and you wish you'd spent more time with your teachers. Oh, yeah. That day's gonna come very soon. Look, up there! Oh, air nomads from other temples are arriving. They're all gonna be in one place if the Fire Nation gets here soon. Guys, if you, I know we ask this question all the time, like if you could bend one element, what would it be? I think I, I've always said air, because I just think it'd be fun to fly. It wasn't the right time. The right time. Oh. We don't have the luxury of waiting for the right time. Oh, that he's the Avatar. But if you could live in any of the nations aesthetically, which one would it be? I think I'd probably pick Earth. Definitely not water. It's cold. Aang is powerful, but there's much he still needs to learn. You're right, but we gotta get, we gotta get all y'all out of here. It's not gonna happen though. If we send him away before he learns these things, he could fail to be everything we need him to be. Well, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen anyway. He'll figure it out. Don't worry. Aang, you are the Avatar. The Fire Nation is embarked on a dark path. You have to leave right away so you can begin training in the other disciplines. Mm. Right away? Leave my friends? Leave home? Leave you? There's a lot to dump on a kid in one conversation. Not only are you the Avatar, but also you must leave right now and begin your training. Because I can't imagine a better person to have been given this power. I don't want the power. Yeah, well, tough. <laughs> I don't want to leave. I don't want the responsibility. I'm scared of my power. I'm scared of being alone. Is Appa crying too? <laughs> Needs to go up where things always make more sense. You can't. Oh no. Okay, so in this version, he he went he went away to maybe get a break, just clear his head for a little bit. But yeah, the Fire Nation's here. Remember, no survivors. Oh, it's horrible. Brothers and sisters, we're under attack. <laughs> Dude, the Air Nomads are so peaceful too. It's so sad. You know, being in charge of air when battling against Fire Nation people, you think would be like just so OP because fire needs air to exist. So wouldn't all you need to do is just form a little air bubble around yourself? A little air vortex? Ah! Oh, he's in a storm, yeah. Honestly, the universe had his back putting him in that storm. Dude. I will say I'm so glad we're having the story be told in this version of the events instead of the out of order sequence that we've gotten like two times now because this is like a lot more compelling and it's just different. And it's sad seeing this battle, but like it happened and I'm glad we're getting to see more of it. It's getting kind of rough, Papa. Maybe we should head back home. Yeah, I can't believe you were flying in the wrong direction for so long in this weather. You know, Avatar, Roku, and Kiyoshi, and all the, all the spirit guides are just up in the sky like, okay, we gotta trap him in this ocean. Oh, oh boy. You may have prevailed on another night. <laughs> but not when we have the power of the comet. Mm. That's why they attacked tonight, the comet. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. They probably would have prevailed on another night. Now we're going to see Katara. Hey. I basically want to live in the Earth Kingdom, dress like a waterbender, and bend like an airbender. That's basically what I want. <laughs> just proves if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Yeah, they just don't appreciate your incredible leadership skills. That's right. They don't realize it. Very funny. <laughs> Katara! Okay. We need to get that canoe or we're gonna end up as fish food. Should be ironic. So far, I don't like Sokka at all. <laughs> Very disappointed. <laughs> Kinda knew that was gonna happen though. That's a fun little reveal. <laughs> he thinks she's doing that. She's just trying to pull the boat back. Such divine timing by the universe that he could just emerge like this when Katara was here and when Zuko was nearby. 
Oh, that was a lot of work for him. He's a little tired. Have you seen Appa? My sky bison? Six legs, horns, brown arrows. Dude, these actors are- Aang is giving me so much. And Katara and Sokka are giving me fucking nothing. I'm not fa a fan so far. Aang is adorable. He's giving me everything. Like, look at this kid. Oh my God, he's adorable. Let's sell this between us. Leader to leader. You really need an army? I thought you firebenders had some guts. Don't fall for it. We overpower them. It's no contest. Well, where's the glory in that? He'll still, he'll still, he'll still defeat Sokka. Sokka's not, <laughs> not, yeah, not good enough for this yet. Leave him alone! I feel like this series so far is just relying so heavily on the music to try to make me feel something when I, I, I just don't like, I feel like that was supposed to be like, oh, hell yeah, badass moment. But I'm, I don't know, maybe it's because I've seen the animated series. Like, it's really hard when you've seen something that's so moving and powerful and then there's an adaptation of it. You're going to compare the two. Peace comes from respecting life, not killing and destroying. A noble sentiment, Avatar. But in the end, for most of us, it doesn't matter how this war started. It only matters how it can end. And the belief is that by capturing you, the Fire Nation can finally bring that about. Mm. Is that what you believe? Mm. No. I must leave. <laughs> no. no. No, no, that's not what I believe. But I can't talk to you anymore. <laughs> Good job, old dude. I bet I Iroh's so smart, I bet he even requested to go see the Avatar knowing that that would give him an opportunity to get the keys if he was, like, smart. Just happened that Zuko seemed to be right there looking for him. Hey, there he is. No way did she just do that. She just did that? Good job, girl. It's interesting, that was a different execution than the animated moment, because didn't he go into the Avatar mode in that moment in the animated series? So instead this was about like Katara learning and gaining strength. That's, that, that's a nice twist. I need to follow through on what they wanted me to do. Complete my training and master all the other bending skills so I can bring balance back to the world. Oh, is that all? <laughs> I just feel like... <sighs> uh, I'm not... It, listen, it's better <laughs> than the M. Night Shyamalan movie so far, it is. But I have issues. The acting is leaving me a lot to be desired. I also just think that there's a lot, like the dialogue is kind of unnatural. A lot of the moments that I think they're trying to make feel super powerful and meaningful, like they're adding this music in, but it's not landing for me. It just feels like they're trying to manipulate me and like, isn't that a cool moment? And I like the way that it started. I like that we started off from a different perspective, showing the lead up and like Aang's life a hundred years ago. I think that was cool. Even the scene where like Gyatso had to tell Aang he was the avatar, like just fell flat for me because of the way that it was written, felt very unnatural. And so I, I don't necessarily think that's only on the actors. That's got to be on, a lot of it feels like it's on the direction, too. So I'm I'm going to try to go into the next episode with more of an open mind. It's time to go home. What? We did our part. We saved him from the firebenders. Now it's time to go home. My duty our duty is to protect the village like dad told us to. There's a lot of lines in this series so far that I've noticed that are written in this predictable manner of like expecting an interruption halfway through by another character. And when you're doing that with young teen and kid actors, they always say the line in a way that they know it's going to end and get cut off, which makes it feel cheesy and not authentic. My dear Katara, you have no idea how hard it's been to keep this from you. But with the Fire Nation hunting for benders, it was just too dangerous for you to have. But now that you've gone out into the world, 
you should take what belongs to you. That's nice of Grand Grand, but it's kind of funny. She's like, now that you're with the Avatar and being actively hunted down, let's give you something that will prove to the Fire Nation that you are in fact a waterbender. <laughs> I thought she didn't get the waterbending scroll from her grand grand in the animated series, right? Didn't she get it from like much later on in the show? I forgot how she obtained it, but I don't think it was from her grand grand, was it? She like found it somewhere. I could be wrong. Honestly, my memory is horrible, but. This port houses the headquarters of the regional Fire Nation commander. Oh, yeah, we're gonna meet that guy. One thing you must learn is how to get what you want without divulging your true intentions. You must use your tact your empathy. Most importantly, you need to have sticky rice. See, like, I feel like a line like that should have been funny, but it just wasn't. And I can't tell if it's the way, the way that it was written or the delivery or both. But there's like a lot of lines that just feel very like not, not funny. Like Uncle Iroh like doesn't feel as charming as I feel like he should feel. Sokka's a buzzkill. Like, I'm just kind of like, man. Oh, are we going to see the war Koyoshi warriors? Stop! You're making a mistake! He's the Avatar! Ridiculous. There would have been signs if he was the Avatar. What? Kiyoshi. I think that might be a sign. Kiyoshi just was like, okay, here's a sign. We're not just any visitors. He's the Avatar. According to you. And a few reflections off a statue. Well, it's the fact that he bends air makes it pretty compelling. So we will open our village. So she, oh, so she is going to let him. For 48 hours. For 48 hours. Right. Anything I can do to help, if you wouldn't mind giving me until the morning, I'm sure we can track down what you need. Very kind. Uh, Commander Zhao. Is this Zhao? Commander Zhao. I thought in the series they had met before, though, right? Like, this wasn't the first time they'd met. They knew each other. And there was tension there between Zhao and Zuko because of, like... I'm not making things up, right? They've changed a lot, right? I'm not losing my mind. I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I feel like they're changing a lot of little details that don't necessarily make sense to change. Someone needs to put a bell on you. There's food in the village hall. Okay, thanks, girl. <sighs> Again, like, it's just not funny. Like, that could be so funny and cute and awkward, but I feel like it just wasn't. I will say the, be well, I can't speak. I will say the bending has looked a lot better in this than it was in, like, the M. Night Shyamalan movie. Like, they're doing a better job with it, making it look more natural. This boy, he may be entertaining, but that doesn't mean he's not dangerous. He's a threat. He is a threat. He he is a threat. That's the point of this episode, too, is like Aang learning that wherever he goes, the Fire Nation will follow and it brings destruction and he has to be responsible about how he, like who he lets know that he's the Avatar, you know? Zhao's boat. It's gone. Zhao? He heard something about a flying cow near Kyoshi Island, so he set sail at dawn. A flying cow. I love how that stranger knows, that random passerby knows what Zhao was doing. He wasn't a military man at all. He was just a guy with a basket. Why does he know where Zhao is? Just because we need to move the plot along? Stop! Stop! Oh, he's going to learn the for Right, he learns the forms by watching them through the doorway. gotten so much better in like a day or two getting the hang of it. Oh. you need to turn your opponent's power against them <laughs> you're a great teacher yeah you're a great teacher to be honest where i'm from there's not much call for a real warrior oh she took her makeup off i think you're a real warrior oh she got it off so fast. I'm not going to lie. Like that was that was probably the least realistic part of this entire series was how fast she got her makeup off. <laughs> I've always wondered what the world outside was like, but I never had the courage to leave. I've always wondered what I'd find. Now I know. <laughs> Mama, close your eyes, Mom. Oh, okay, good. Mom wasn't being the buzzkill there. You're here too. We have to go. Oh, he's like, I hear the bells too. Wedding bell. Oh, it's, oh, it's an alarm. Oh. <laughs> That's not what I'd heard. I understand you had an unexpected visitor just the other day. 
You must be mistaken. Oh, damn, Sokka. Those fans are f***ing... Oh, they just ran away. Where is the Avatar? He's coming. He's coming. Oh, no, he's not. Hold on. He's a little busy. Oh. Oh, he's in Kyoshi form. Back to the ship! Oh my god. That, she was the only one who looked like she was in a windy mess with that straw all over her face. Listen, I, uh, I wish we had more time. I know. I do too. Don't worry, you will. It's coming. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not in this, I don't, maybe not in this series, but I would assume that they've been changing things, so I don't know. What? She just gave him his, her fan? What? That's crazy. So this means you don't want to go home anymore? I'll let you guys have all the fun. Oh no, he's got a new girlfriend to meet at the North Pole. <laughs> Kiyoshi said I can only call upon one of the past avatars when I'm in the shrines. Oh. He better go into big fish daddy mode or I'm going to be pissed off if they change that. He's got to be a big fish daddy. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right term to call. Big fish man. That is why I can report an astounding development. One that could change the future of the Fire Nation. You think the room would eventually run out of oxygen with all this stuff burning in the background all the time. The Avatar has returned. Yep. All right, uh, you know, <laughs> same kind of vibes, I feel like, as the first one. It's just kind of mid. Um, I'm going to give it one more episode. Sharp open. On the Fire Nation. I do love how dramatic we always are. The minute we cut to the Fire Nation, it just looks like this desolate, dark, evil place. No one could ever be possibly happy here. It's always nighttime, too. It's never daytime. I want you to meet someone willing to risk everything for our cause. She works at the palace. She works at the palace. That is a pretty bold move, girl. Fire Lord Ozai must die tonight! It's not gonna happen, guys. I'm sorry to say you're gonna fail big time. Oh, girl, you about to lose more than just your job. You don't think he has like a million guards? Yeah, he's not sitting on the throne waiting for you like a little present. You're surprised? Or did you expect my men to just lay down their arms after you slaughtered their fire lord? I don't know what he, he thought. Have I not led us to the brink of bringing the entire world under one rule? Our rule. To ensure an era of peace. Oh, well, it's not peace if it's, it's like Kuvira's peace. It's like, it's just dictatorship. My compliments on making it this far. Yeah, she, I knew she betrayed him. I knew. Isn't that right? Azula. That's Azula? Oh, that's Azula. She put on a little act. Yes, father. Oh, that's a fun little reveal. The one who has returned to us. Yeah! Ooh, I think the choice to hold on her face was fun there. Like seeing her eyes light with fire was really cool. And how she enjoyed watching them burn. Ooh. Mm, yeah. So are we gonna meet Boomy and the cabbage guy? Oh my God, please tell me we meet the cabbage guy. They don't take kindly to outsiders in Amashu. Oh yeah, this is where we meet that. Is it right? This isn't, isn't this the guy that like is an earthbender but has to hide it that we meet early on in the first season? He just had spare clothes. Oh, it wasn't a great crop this month. <laughs> She told me I wasn't watering the turnips enough. Yeah, there was a reason I married her. Ah! Uh, my my brother-in-law would agree if he could speak. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, just get him to shut up real quick. Just the other day, he made us laugh so hard. All right, that that's enough. Move along. They didn't care about Aang in the back, though. They had no questions about Aang. It's fine. Let him in. We don't we don't care about the fourth person. <laughs> Probably make more sense for them to keep the outfits. Watch out for my room. Yeah, there he is, cabbage guy. 
You're not an airbender. An airbender? Of course I'm not. What the f I feel like we're mixing episodes here, aren't we? Don't we not meet that kid until the... I could be wrong. I don't... I thought we did... He's an airbender. Well, yeah, he's dressed like one, too. He's not really hiding it very well. Maybe we're just combining it for time's sake. Because they don't live in Omashu. They live in, like, the old air temple. If everyone in Omashu were as dedicated as you, this war would be over. The Fire Nation would be on their knees by now. Yes, 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 yes. I wonder if in this version he still was working on the air balloons for the Fire Nation. Because he looks like, I'm sure we're keeping that secret a part of the lore, right, for this story. I'm just confused that we're meeting these guys already in Omashu. She's not even wet after that CGI water slap. <laughs> mm hmm. What are you doing? Shh. Oh, he's here. But that means the mechanist is a traitor. I love how the Fire Nation spies dress exactly like how you'd imagine a Fire Nation spy would dress. Like <laughs> they're not sneaky at all. Wait, who are you? You call me Jet. Oh, Jet. Okay, that was Jet. Got it. I was like, this is not the guy that was the like sneaky little earthbender guy. Like we're just meshing so many episodes into one. I mean, I get it. They got to move things along a little faster, I guess, but it's just confusing. The only th person I expected to meet in this episode is Boomy. <laughs> we haven't met Boomy yet. <laughs> who are you people? Or the good guys. Oh. Uh, Katara is giving me just nothing. Uh, nothing. After the Fire Nation attacked our village, he kept us alive. He built our life here. He's always said that it's just me and him, and he'd do anything to protect us. And you want him to do more? I want him to see that we have to do everything we can to save the world. Because if not us, then who? This little kid is doing a good job with the lines he's been given. He's, I believe him as Tio. So you just took it on yourselves to fight the firebenders? Well, if not us, then who? Everyone here has lost someone to the Fire Nation. Well, I like it's it's cool that we're having like, I guess, like these two different experiences of like two characters that are essentially saying the same thing, Jet and Tio. Like, if not us, then who? You know, it's like the moral of this episode. So I do think they did a good job in that respect of like pairing these characters together and trying to tell the storylines in a way that was cohesive but could keep the things moving. I remember seeing her outside the hut, getting to work, preparing breakfast. <sighs> and every day, she would stop when the sun rose. There's just so much scoring. I feel like they're trying to get me to feel something with this like constant musical scoring, but I'm just not feeling anything. We don't have to be afraid of our pain. We just need to decide what we're going to do with it. Oh my God, there's just so many pauses and awkwardness and- Charm, I mean, the, the dirt, the noise, the, the stench. There's so many awkward pauses between like lines that don't really make sense. It just feels like dead air. He didn't tell the truth. Because he couldn't. He's fighting the firebenders and he has to protect himself. Besides, I saw Sai talking to the firebender. He's the traitor. You don't know what you saw. Oh boy, there's so much confusion now. Okay, I see what they were going for with this episode. Never believing anything I say. I'm so sick of you treating me like I'm a little girl. Then grow up. Where are you going? To prove you're a jerk. Oh yeah? Well, I don't need proof of that. <laughs> okay, his delivery on that was good, but the music didn't match what he was doing there. Like the music was a weird choice there. We just launched a big mission. Things might get a little hot for us around here. Mission? What mission? I mean, you were there when we confirmed the mechanist was a traitor. They're gonna blow up his house? Uh-oh. <gasps> so sorry. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I'm so clumsy. Are you hurt? No, no, no. No harm done. Oh, no. What do they put? What's in his case? Is it blasting jelly? That's not cool. Yeah. You're going to blow him up? Not just him. He's got an audience with the king. Oh, no. Innocent people are gonna die, Jet. 
That's the price of freedom. See, like that pause there, like, I don't know. I understand you got to like take in and think of your lines, but some of the pauses just feel so unnatural and it feels like just horrible direction. You have my notebook. Oh, the cabbages. My, my, my cabbages! Okay, thank you. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> I was about to say, say the line! Oh god. Well, that's boomy. Oh no. Protect the king! <sighs> it's not over yet, though. Poor Tio's dad is gonna get blamed for the uh, like a, an attack on the king because his case got switched. Although he is working with the Fire Nation, so he kind of deserves to get in trouble. Uh oh. Yeah, I. As you can probably tell, my outfits were different uh, in these episode reactions than they were in the intro and the outro. I actually filmed the intro for this as well as the outro for this at the same time. Weeks actually after I've finished watching Avatar, I actually heavily debated whether or not I wanted to even post the reactions to these episodes. Because by the third episode, I was starting to really resent the fact that I was even watching the show. I was starting to get really frustrated with what was in front of me, really not enjoying a lot of the performances that I was seeing, the direction that I was seeing. It just felt really dull to me, really lackluster. It felt like the show wasn't offering anything new, or at times when they were offering new things, it was like making these little tiny changes in the lore that didn't even really need to happen or didn't even really make sense or sometimes it was something that I was okay with, like Katara getting involved in saving Aang rather than him going into the Avatar state in the very beginning. Like things like that to me didn't really bother me as much, but there were a lot of little changes that happened that just didn't feel super impactful. It just kind of made me fixate on the fact that it was different from the show, not in a way that felt super meaningful, if that makes sense. I, you know, it just doesn't feel good to be sitting and watching a show when you're frustrated with the performances on screen in front of you and you're frustrated with the direction. There were actors who did a decent job in this show, but because of the pacing and because of a lot of the awkward pauses and awkward moments in the blocking, in the direction, in the choreography of shots, even those good moments kind of fell flat and it just never really wowed me. I never really felt like I was getting sucked into this world and actually getting immersed. I just felt removed and I wasn't enjoying it at all. I really tried. I, I really tried. Um, I, I don't want to watch it anymore, quite frankly. <laughs> I don't, I, it's, it's not that it's like the worst thing I've ever seen, right? Like it doesn't make me upset. I just think it's meh. It's not horrible. It's not like the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's not great. And there are just so many other things that I could be diving into. And this quite frankly feels like a waste of time because it's just a retelling of a story that I've already seen done a lot better. And I'm quite frankly really disappointed with a lot of these companies coming in and just doing the same old retelling of a story in a slightly different way, specifically animated stories that are getting retold with live action because it just feels completely creatively bankrupt. There are movies out there like everything everywhere all at once like poor things that are unique that are different we can tell unique and different stories and they don't need to be revolutionary they can just be unique and a little different i don't want the same story told over and over again in just a slightly different way it's boring to me the animated version of avatar the last airbender was great it was perfect. I really had nothing bad to say about that show. I remember when I started the show, I thought some of the characters were cringy. And by season four, I was weeping. I was so emotionally invested. I was tapped into every single one of these characters. And I empathized with all of them, including the most unhinged villains. And this show just... I couldn't even sit with it for more than three episodes. There were some good performances in this. I will say there were some actors who really understood their assignment, but 
they can't carry this entire production on their shoulders. There's a lot wrong with this show, and I think it stems from the script, the direction, a lot of the dialogue. I know some of the dialogue is repeated from the original show, but a lot of it just feels really disjointed from things that are actually going on. A lot of the responses from some, whether it's characters or whether it's the acting or whether it's the direction, just doesn't feel like it's garnered in the actual stakes of what was going on in the story. So I can't sit with it any longer. I don't feel like this is a enjoyable thing for me to keep doing. Um, and I also don't think that that would make for enjoyable content for you guys. So I'm going to step away from this one for now. I gave it three episodes. That was as much as I could really handle. I know there are some folks out there that love this show, and I think that that's great. I always say art is subjective. You don't have to agree with my opinion. I don't have to agree with yours. I think if you love the show, that's fantastic. I'm happy for you. It's just not for me. Some people tend to get really upset when I rag on things that they like, and I get it. Nobody really wants to hear that anybody really doesn't like something that they're really passionate about or something that they really love. Like I have movies that I love and when I have friends or people in my life come up to me and tell me they hate it, it does hurt a little bit. You want to convince them like why you're right and why they're wrong. I totally understand that. But all I can say is that I respect your opinion if you like this show, but it's just not for me. So this is as far as I go. I am still glad that I checked it out regardless and I hope you all enjoyed watching these episodes with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know and I can do more content like this in the future with all of y'all. Not this show again, but maybe more Netflix live action things. Like I've, I haven't seen the One Piece live action and I know that that was well received. However, I've also never seen the One Piece anime because I don't watch anime here on my channel just because of the copyright issues that anime tends to bring. It's unfortunate because I really loved Avatar The Last Airbender and I don't think that that's necessarily pure anime. It doesn't come out of Japan, but I would be open to watching stuff like that if I felt like I could and not risk copyright strikes, sadly. But regardless, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as well as anything else you might like me to check out next and subscribe if you want to. Till the next one, stay golden. Bye.